More fresh inflation data Thursday. What does it mean? I'm Lisa Bernhard with Reuters, and here to speak to us is Liz Miller. She's president of Summit Place Financial Advisors. Liz, the producer price index out today, it rose less than expected. First, explain to us producer prices, the same as wholesale prices or not? Similar. It is meant to measure wholesale prices of goods and services. So on the goods side, it's very uh, accurate to say this is wholesale prices. The idea is you have raw materials and then the producer price index follows those prices in the middle of preparation, right? We get raw materials, they go to a producer, and then those materials as finished products go to CPI. So it is correct to sort of say that it's the wholesale price, but on the service side, there's some real differences just to be aware of. Producer prices on the service inputs doesn't measure rent, which is almost a third of CPI measurements, but it does capture healthcare services in a much bigger way. So there are subtle differences between the two where we can't quite say PPI feeds directly into CPI. Gotcha. Okay. So what was your major takeaway from the PPI numbers today? I think PPI numbers were good. They uh, were a little less than expected, as we heard, up 0.2% expected to be up 0.3 for the month and down from a pretty strong reading back in February of 0.6. Now the year over year went up slightly, but that's really about the calendar as we say. You know, every month we're pulling off one from last year to this year. So, I don't think the year over year number going up should be a warning sign to anyone. I think looking at that trend in the monthly is much more important for us today. The PPI does come on the heels of the CPI, the Consumer Price Index, which you alluded to, which we saw yesterday, which showed that the annual rate ticked up to three and a half percent, in part due to what you were just talking about, that the prior year's uh, month of March dropped off, which was low. But in any event, we are still sitting in an annual rate that's in the three percent range. How much longer does it sit there before the Fed feels that they will start to cut rates or do they really absolutely wait until they get to that 2% annual target rate? I think the Fed wants to be watching trend. I don't think 3% is worrisome in itself, down significantly from the peak we had last year. And not surprising that we're seeing CPI sort of sticky. Some people say the bumpy road of the last mile. Any way we use a phrase, it's expected that you get a quick decline at first, and then it's a much slower trend to work your way lower. Well, let me ask you this. So we had weekly jobless claims that came in again today, which showed that the labor market is, continues to be tight. So people have jobs, they have relatively high wages still, and so they can buy things at a higher price. So <laughs> let's ask you the ultimate question, uh, make you the grand poobah of all economists. But so how in that scenario do you break the cycle of inflation? So inflation isn't only about employment. So that's the most important thing to keep in mind. It is actually a wonderful scenario to have a strong employment market while we're trying to bring inflation down. It means that we have a resilient economy, which is the best case. You really don't want to be trying to address all of this in a struggling economy. And when we look at jobless claims, we look at new employment, partly what we're seeing is more and more people coming into the market for employment, meaning we have more workers than we did just a few years ago. We had a lot of people on the sidelines post COVID and we're seeing the number of quits, people leaving the job market really declining. So some of these numbers are all reflecting that the pool of workers has really gone up. So as you said, when that's the case, we're really looking at wage gains and the wage gains are sufficient to help people keep having a relatively good life in the inflation we have today. That's all good news. Okay, let's turn to the 10-year Treasury yield, which is at about 4.5% right now. And I'm seeing some rumblings that perhaps it would go up to 5%. If it goes to 5%, what is then your recommendation for bond investors? But we've certainly seen the bond market move higher again on the recent CPI information, but on the PPI information, the bond market looks to be thinking more carefully about what is happening and feeling that there was an overreaction to the current CPI data. What all that means is 
everyone's trying to read tea leaves as to when and how the Fed might lower rates, and that's what's reflected in the bond market. Now, bond math is always what it's about for investors. If rates go up, prices temporarily go down, which is a great time to buy new bonds. But if your old bonds are down in price for the day, that doesn't mean you need to get rid of them. The return that you're going to get to maturity or what we call yield to maturity in the business adjusts for the price differential. So you're going to get the same return buying a new bond today or holding the bond you've got today from now until that same maturity date. Finally, some of the big banks kick off earnings season tomorrow. What will you be looking for in their earnings reports? No, economically, we've had a really good quarter until just the last few days, even we've seen rates move down all quarter and we had a strong stock market. So I expect these bank earnings to be really strong. We're going to be looking at JP Morgan first thing in the morning. We're looking at BlackRock that's going to really reflect some of those trends in the market. What I care most about is what they see going forward. I think we're going to have strong earnings from the quarter, maybe even upside surprises, But given the stickiness of inflation that we're seeing, we're really going to want to hear what these banks see in their business trends for the next quarter and the rest of the year.